I'm Stacey Eubanks and welcome to the pilot episode of Wed Bliss. During my career, I have been a viable component to many weddings, large and small, in the roles of planning, consulting, and directing. Needless to say, I love weddings and I am very excited to be the host of this new television show, which is a brand new concept to the Tri-Cities area. Each episode, we will connect area wedding professionals with current and future brides and grooms. Think of it like a weekly bridal show right in your living room without all the stress and one-on-one -on -one sales pitches. Television isn't the only outlet that we will be airing episodes. That's right. Each episode will be available through wedbliss.tv, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Area wedding professionals are very excited about this new form of advertising as it allows them to present themselves and their craft in a new forward-thinking and progressive manner. Future wedding couples are also very excited to have this new program available because it will be very resourceful and they can connect with their vendors' personalities on air. Wet Bliss is the next big thing to hit this area and we would love to invite you to see what we are all about. The purpose of this pilot is to show you a glimpse of the content, format, and to seek sponsors and advertisers. This episode is not fully polished. It's a pilot, a rough sketch if you will. But you will be hearing from some area wedding professionals as well as a recent bride and groom. So check us out at wedbliss.tv while we take a quick commercial break. Summer is right around the corner. Will you have the body that you want when it gets here? Don't take a chance, take the 90 day body bye bye challenge. Over 3000 people join the fastest growing health challenge in North America every day. How does it work? Set your fitness or weight loss goals. Choose from one of our five unique kits and start the challenge. Fasalis also offers a refer three and get yours free incentive. So what are you waiting for? Join my friends and I on this 90 day challenge by calling or visiting my website today and have the body that you want by summer. Interested in advertising with Wed Bliss? Want your commercial to air in this space? Visit wedbliss.tv slash opportunities for more information. Well, Jerome, thank you for sitting down with me in front of the camera. How does it feel to be out from behind the camera? Strange, very strange. I have a new respect for everybody I film. This is take 109. <laughs> uh, not really, but you know, you guys talked me into it, so here I am. Well, you know, we wanted to hear the idea. We want the viewers to hear where Wed Bliss came from. And, you know, for the sponsors that are interested in, in being a part of the show, we want to hear what your goals are for this show and, and how it cultivated. Uh, a friend of mine, a uh, fellow videographer, Bill Grant, he's out of uh, Columbia, South Carolina. He does a three to five minute news segment for his local station. And basically it's, you know, area vendors coming on, talking about their things and services and uh you know, it's, it's cool. It's catching on really good down there. And I said, you need to make a TV show about this. And he goes, well, I don't really have time right now to do all that. This is working. And um, I said, well, I might take that idea. And he said, run with it. So here we are. So I here we to, are. Yeah, I talked to a few uh, wedding vendor friends of mine in the area, and they love the concept. So... Well, this is great. Yeah. So this isn't your first time around with weddings, right? You, you mentioned some wedding vendors. So how have you evolved into the wedding industry and kind of your background of getting to this point? Because when I first met you, you were a chef. Well, back in the day, being a chef, I was able to make a lot of contacts in the wedding community. In 2003, I filmed my first wedding and you know, I started out as a hobby and then you know, I kept rolling with it and getting better and better and better. And I made a lot of contacts you know, locally and around the region as well in the wedding community and uh, became friends with a lot of them. Now, Jerome, this isn't your first television production, correct? Uh, correct. You know, about a year and a half ago, I started doing some TV commercials, um, and we're on episode 84 right now with a television show called uh, MMA Inside the Cage, which is a local mixed martial arts uh, talk show, and it's actually broadcast nationwide, too. We have two versions running every week. Um, so, you know, getting back to discussing this with Bill, you know, it's like, let's take the you know, wedding community that I'm, you know, friends with, and let's get that on air. Now, where are you wanting to see Wed Bliss go? How are you wanting to see it take off? You know, we're going to have so many different uh, wedding professionals on, and we're hoping that it helps their business as well as helps the bride and grooms of the area. Is that your intention? Is that what you're creating this show for, is to be a, a resource? Yeah, you know, it's 2012. We've got Facebook, we have Twitter, all kinds of social networking. As far as a direct path, I have no idea because, you know, an idea can go many directions um, through with everybody I've talked about with the show. Um, there can be many things happen. Uh, it all depends on, you know, the interest level of the viewers. 
the interest level of the vendors and you know sponsors because you know that's what's going to drive the show. Now, Jerome, how is Wed Bliss going to be different from from the other reality or other wedding planning shows that are out there? Well, re reality TV is all for ratings and drama. That's all it is. Um, you might get little tidbits of information out of it. Uh, now, I don't want it to be a dry, you know, very technical, you know, forum for this. Right. Um, but you know, I want it entertaining. I want it to be informative. Uh, you might throw a little drama in here and there. Who knows? Um, you know, I, I'd like to see. Uh, you know, we had the idea of having a newly engaged couple. You know, come on, we'll do a weekly series or you know a series of them going shopping them for playing. their vendors and mm -hmm. all their things, and uh, you know, up to their wedding day. You know, let's film the wedding and you know show it uh, because who doesn't know somebody getting married? Right. So you know. People will connect on it in so many ways. So, and you know, I, I was recently married in September, and I was fortunate enough to know a lot of people, you know, that do wedding services. Mm -hmm. I knew what I wanted. Uh, we had a very okay. simple wedding, uh, but everything was nice, and very grateful for all, having all that. Um, but you know, to the average person, yeah, they don't they don't know what all goes into it, and, yeah. and it's it's very easy to get and bogged down the, in the details. You know, People want to do business with people they like. Right. You know, you can't see that in a print ad. You mm -hmm. know, you can't see that whenever they're talking to 10 dif different people on a uh, bridal show booth. So, you right. know, if they're coming on here, talking with you, show their work on the screen here. You know, um, you know, Hannah's going to be coming in later and, you know, she'll probably bring in some goodies. So, yes. you know. Looking forward to that. It's yeah. kind of why I wanted to be the host of the yeah. show. Yeah. <laughs> for, the, so, for the cake. Yeah. And, you know, let's bring the personalities together. Right. Well, great. Well, thank you so much, Jerome. We appreciate this opportunity to bring this vision to the Tri-Cities area, and I'm glad to be a part of it, and I'm glad you stepped out from behind the camera, and we look forward to a, a fun and adventurous ride and a successful ride. Thank you, and uh, I'm going to get back there because that's where I'm comfortable. Yes, please. Go try some, maybe some cake. Yeah. Okay. Well, now that you know a little bit about Wed Bliss, let's talk to our first guest, Miss Hannah Mead from the Cake Gallery. Hannah, thank you for being here today. We're very glad you're here to talk to us a little bit about what you do, which is these yummy cakes. <laughs> thank you for having me, Stacy. I'm very excited to be here and talk a little bit about what I do. Uh, of course, I love what I do, so. <laughs> that helps, <laughs> that helps. Who wouldn't be if you're around buttercream Exactly. All day? I have a very great part of the wedding planning process, yes. so. <laughs> exactly, you do. Um, if you could tell us, just first off, how do you think Wed Bliss is as a benefit for the viewers of the area and how it helps you as a wedding vendor? Well, I'm very excited as a vendor to be able to sit down and be a little more intimate about what I do and talk a little more than just seeing pictures on your website or flipping through a magazine or something like that. And I think for the brides, it's going to be something really special because they all love to go on TV and watch all the shows and everything. But now this is something about their vendors and the people in their area that they can relate to. So Right, right. Well, the, you know, the great thing about we will get to this in talking about cakes is we all see them we watch the cupcake tv shows yes. <laughs> and watch all the different different tv shows but this brings it to the living room but you really can't experience the cake tasting <laughs> like i'm about to yes um, so you do offer cake tasting i do and that's one of groups. the most fun parts of your wedding planning is getting to sit down you and your fiance and and having a tasting now i personally offer around 30 different flavor combinations so when we sit down it's a variety of cakes and buttercreams and fillings and we mix and match all the different combinations and they have a lot of fun with it <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun <laughs> now as a cake artist it's very important for you to sit down and understand the needs and desires of the bride and groom for the event what would you say is the most important thing that brides and grooms need to consider whenever they're planning for their wedding cake? I always just say be prepared, do your research, think about your budget. Um, you need to know a good number of guest counts, a good idea of what your guest count is going to be, um, an idea and feel of your wedding and what you want your reception to be like. And I'll get all that information from you and then we design the cake. Um, I give you a sketch during the consultation to make sure it's the cake of your dreams. Now, if someone's just curious, obviously, you know, I've been in the business long enough, you've been yes. in the business long <laughs> enough, what's just a good ballpark figure to, for them to just kind of plan on as far as budgeting? Because, you know, yes, it can it, go many it ways. It can go many yeah. ways. <laughs> I, I can, it can be something as simple as $4 per serving or something more intricate as $10 per serving. So it can go many, many ways. So I always tell the brides, Think about the budget. Budget out for your whole wedding and not just for the cake and then see what you can spend. And then when we get together, then we plan the cake to fit your needs. 
Okay. Now, what would you say is, is one of the most ideal or most popular flavors that you do? That's you said you've one. got 30. <laughs> yes. This is my most popular flavor. It's called a white chocolate raspberry cake. It's a white cake. It has a raspberry fruit filling and a white chocolate buttercream. So <laughs> the majority of weddings that I do, this is one of the flavors that I make for it. <laughs> well, have you had any unusual requests or anything that... <laughs> Like a very, you know, the groom's cake is where people get very creative. Yes, as far as designs, I have yeah. done some very unusual designs. <laughs> uh, anything from pets, gas stations, um, surgical trays, all oh, kinds wow. of stuff. So now I like a challenge though, so I yes. like to see something yes. different. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to tell them no, and you you don't no. want to appear like you can't. If you can dream it, it, I will make it. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> now, what would you say to someone who wants to find out more information about your mm -hmm. business? wants to sit down with you and say, you know what, Hannah, I have no idea what I want. You have 30 flavors to choose from. How could I possibly choose the flavors that I want? And if we have a testing, mm -hmm. you know, should I bring my entire bridal party and my family <laughs> to help no. me? No. <laughs> I always say too many opinions is not always a good thing. The wedding is your day. It's about you and your fiance. So, of course, it's okay to have a couple people with you. But I really suggest just keeping it very minimal at the consultation and tasting. And then it, it seems overwhelming at first, but it does come together. And I allow my brides and grooms to pick a different flavor for each tier of the cake. So you don't have to go in and just choose one. You can choose three, four, or five different flavors for the cake. It's fun for your guests, and it's a lot more fun for you that way. So. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> now, do you, as, um, a, as a cake artist, do you find that most people don't put as much emphasis on their cake as they should, or... I actually find it. that it's it's a really big part of their wedding and a big part of the planning process that they get excited about. Mm -hmm. A lot of brides will say, this is the part I've been waiting for, you know, right. so to get down, and especially for the groom. <laughs> oh, well, and, and plus the tasting, yeah, that's the best that's part. That's the part that they like. <laughs> I'm looking so. forward to tasting this cake <laughs> towards the end of this segment. And a lot of people will come in, and maybe they don't know what they want, and they don't know what the cake what they want the cake to look like, but that is my job. So I get them to tell me what the reception's gonna be like. I'll pull the ideas out of your head and then I put it on paper and now, and just on an aside, you don't just do weddings, correct? Correct. Or do parties, yes. birthday parties, retirement yes. parties, anything like that. Absolutely. In case anybody else Any out there is watching. Baby showers, birthdays, anniversaries. Now, what's the largest cake? number of servings that you've ever prepared? I would say probably 350 or so, okay. somewhere in that range. Which is big for yes. this area. Yes, it is. It is, it is very large. Now, yes. do you travel outside of the Tri-Cities? I do. Okay. I do. I do a lot of business in Virginia, North Carolina, and um, I do travel. So, Hannah, thank you so much for being here today and sharing your cake artistry expertise with us here on Wed Bliss. We appreciate you being here and telling us all we need to know about wedding <laughs> cakes. Now, if you could, let the viewers know how they can get in touch with you and make an appointment. And while you're doing that, I'm going to sample some of your wedding cake. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, my business is run by appointment only, and you can contact me by calling me. It's 423-341. 8940. You may also contact me through my website, which is thecakegallery.org. This is wonderful. <laughs> it is wonderful. Thank you. And I'm so excited that I get to take the rest of that cake home. <laughs> you do. <laughs> thank you so much. This You're is so very welcome. good. We appreciate you. And thank you for having me. We are now booking featured wedding professionals. If you're interested in appearing in a Wed Bliss episode as a featured vendor, please visit wedbliss.tv slash opportunities today. Hello, can I help you? Oh uh, yes, I'd like to see why I'm getting along, please. I think Greg can help you with that. Okay. Come on back. First, do you have a checking account? It's open in good standing? Yes. Okay, good. And uh, do you have automobiles free and clear? Yes. Good. And do you have steady income or steady job? Yes. Well, based on that, we may be able to help you. You've been approved. Just sign here. And here's your check. It's that easy? Yes, it's that easy. Fast loans. Easy approvals. Affordable payments. Come see us today. Hi, and welcome back to Wed Bliss. I'm Stacey Eubanks, and we are joined today by Brandy Woodall with Positive Approach Events. And Brandy's going to tell us a little bit about her event planning services as well as the other services offered from her, her company. So thank you for being with us today. 
Thank you for having us. And we appreciate you bringing your expertise and, and we, I'm sure we could talk for a very long time about all the different experiences that you and I both shared in planning weddings. So Absolutely. If you could tell us a little bit about your company um, and its focus on, on weddings and what services you provide to brides. Okay. We, um, we actually started in Jonesboro in 2007. And uh, initially it was just kind of a part-time and we started out doing a few weddings. Um, day of coordination is a really big hit with us, so we get a lot of day of coordination, but we've kind of expanded our services and now we do everything, as we like to say, from concept to cleanup and everything in between and there are a lot of details in there. Uh, so at, to date we've done, I can't even count how many weddings. Well, I think it's funny on your website, people go to your website and it says on there, we do everything but kiss the bride. It's true. <laughs> it's <laughs> That's true. That's great. That's great. If you could, um, tell us about your experiences from, I guess, the process and, and how people, first they contact you and then there's initial consultation and then what actually goes into planning the event and what level of service you know how how in depth you can get or how you know hands off you can be as well and and that's really true i mean we can be as hands on or hands off as somebody needs us to be um really the only package that we have um that we feel like over the last few years uh, are pretty specific tasks that people want us to do are our planning light packages or day of um, other than that, we customize everything. So the first thing I do is send a questionnaire to the potential bride or the couple, and I ask them to tell me everything that they can uh, as far as you know how they got engaged, how long they've been engaged, how many people are actually involved in the planning process, because often I find it's a bride, her mother, maybe her father, the groom's parents, it could be a multitude of people. Um, so we want the decision makers to really come to the table at the consultation so we can assess all of their needs at that time. And from then, we kind of see what they already have lined up and we will give them a proposal based on what they need. So how important is it um, for someone to have a wedding planner such as yourself, even if the facility or the venue where they're having their event provides a coordinator as well? How important is it to have that, that extra person planning the details of it? Well, many times what you'll find at an, a specific venue, uh, we'll say um, at a hotel, for instance, they will always have usually an in-house coordinator. And their job specifically is to coordinate the logistics, the layout, coordinate with the kitchen, um, and a lot of the catering duties. What you find with planners is we're more about the timeline. So we need to know exactly what time the cake's gonna be cut so we can communicate to the bride, uh, you know, what's coming up next. Then we can go to the DJ or their music and let them know what's coming up next. So we're kind of the ambassador or the liaison that they have on site and we won't miss anything. So if somebody needs to throw, toss a bouquet or throw a garter, we signal all those things that are coming up. Now you had mentioned planner. If you could explain the difference, I think that there's several different terms used interchangeably. A wedding designer, a wedding planner, a wedding coordinator. What, what's the importance of, of the differences in those? Well, really, and, and a lot of this too is research that I've done. Um, and you look at different aspects in the industry, but typically a wedding designer is someone that works with a planner or a coordinator. It's somebody, and a lot of florals, uh, florists actually offer services that are designed. So they can come, uh, they can actually look at the wedding itself and they can say this is what your centerpiece should be let's look at your linens that kind of thing and then as far as a coordinator I kind of call them the timekeeper because they are the timeline and they will keep everybody on track and keep everything flowing a planner however does everything that's all inclusive so they will not often or not only offer referrals and and that's really where the expertise comes in you know budget planning which is the huge part of every wedding um, that's where a planner comes in because they'll actually say to someone you know go to this cake artist that cake artist or the other based on a budget a percentage instead of just randomly giving out referrals right um, and then and that saves the bride time it too. really does and that's what you pay for in a planner you it's not about it's about quantifying your time right. um, you know do you have extra hours the 250 hours that it typically takes to plan a wedding to put into finding that perfect cake artist or maybe finding that DJ or whatever it is. 
and you mentioned 250 hours. I'm just curious, what's the shortest amount of time you've ever planned a wedding in? Actually, we had a wedding um, at our special event space. We had a wedding and the bride came to me about five weeks prior to her selected date. She already knew that's the date she wanted to get married. We just happened to have that date available and I was terrified for her. But she was very good. She was on top of everything and a very do-it-yourself kind of bride. And she pulled it off. She was really good. That's but wonderful. it was terrifying. I mean, yeah. because typically people take, you know, nine to 12 months. Sometimes, uh, you know, right now we're working with brides who are planning their weddings in 2013. Wow, that's amazing how they can, you can do it in a short amount of time or take the time you need to, it's to spread it out. And You know, I've noticed with so many weddings that I've planned that that age group of bride is also either graduating college, they're also gonna buy a house, mm -hmm. and they're gonna, it's like, can you not just plan a wedding? Do you have to be doing all these other things too? <laughs> it's true, and you know, I think the majority of my, my brides tend to come from uh, young ladies who are still in college, who are still working, um, they may or may not already have children. You know, they've got family obligations. So there are always so many things that are kind of thrown into the mix. And the last thing they have time to do is to get in the car and go out looking for linens or go, go out looking for flowers. And so if we can cut some of that time down and streamline the process, that's what they need. Definitely. Now we've, we've talked about your event planning services, but tell us a little bit about, you mentioned your venue, which is actually venue it and you are venue. the owner and operator of that. So tell us a little bit about that as, as a special event facility. We opened venue at the King Center in downtown Johnson City in late 2010. And we actually have 10,000 square feet of space. Uh, it's kind of an urban loft setting. So uh, exposed brick, original hardwood floor, city views. Um, and our pricing structure really depends on what somebody needs. They, I'm still a planner at heart. So if someone comes in and they need referrals, um, that's the first thing I do when they book with us is I give them a long list of referrals based on my experiences and the people that I've worked with in the past. So they kind of get a twofer is what right. I call it. Right. Um, but when they come in, they, they tell us what they need and we kind of help them through the process as well. What would you say is the, the most important detail that's so often overlooked by brides whenever they're planning? There are a lot of details. So really, <laughs> no, truthfully, and and uh, and we spoke about this a little bit earlier today. I would say the number one thing is that brides get as far as the end of the reception and they don't think about anything afterwards. So delegate to somebody in your family or your planner, whatever it is, to make sure that they take home the leftover food, any personal items. Uh, who's going to stay and clean up if you're having? your wedding at a venue that doesn't offer that service, especially if you're having something at a personal home. I mean, those are all things that you have to take into account. So the wedding doesn't stop at 11 o'clock when the DJ shuts the music off. It continues. I mean, there's still the teardown process. So think about those things ahead of time and make sure that you delegate those things out to family members. You know, and you touched on one key word that is very important that I have suggested to brides for years, and that's delegate. You have to. Delegate to somebody you trust, you know, I think so many brides and even grooms get caught up and we'll do it. We'll take care of it. We got that. We'll make this. We'll do the invitations. We'll do. And they realize it's very overwhelming and they're not actually being able to take in the joys of actually planning a wedding. It's true. And part of what we offer as a planning process is we want it to be fun. We want it to be interactive. There's nothing that makes me be feel better about my job than when a bride is laughing through the process and having a good time because you should enjoy the time that you're engaged. It's a celebration. The wedding's just the end of the celebration for your engagement and a, a whole new beginning at that. But, you know, you should, um, you should delegate out some of the tasks that you have. I know DIY, do it yourself is a big buzz right now and and there are a lot of brides that say I can do my own centerpieces mm -hmm. and you know what you probably can but can you do 25 the day before your wedding because you're yeah. dealing with fresh flowers you can't do them weeks in advance so a lot of it's being realistic or if you have family members that are willing to step in and help grab them yeah 
Yeah. So how important do you believe web bliss is to the vendors such as yourself in the area, as well as the brides of the Tri-Cities and, and it's, it's moving forward and it's focus and how, how important do you see that being as a concept in the area? I was so excited about web bliss TV when I heard about it because it's new, it's fresh, it's something that hasn't been done in our region and it's something that's absolutely necessary because so many brides um, nowadays don't have the opportunity to flip open a magazine. They're not paying any attention to a billboard uh, and they're not going to get mailers. I mean, there are a multitude of ways that people market. Um, but what they will do with Wed Bliss TV, the fact that it's archived, is that they can go in and research it. They can actually go back and watch the episodes for it. So if there's something that somebody, their grandma saw on Wed Bliss TV, she's going to be able to say, hey, you should check this out. So I think it's very important as a vendor to have the opportunity to be on a show like Wed Bliss TV. Well, very good. Well, thank you so much for being here. We're very excited you got to come and tell us about your services. And we look forward to seeing you again in the future. And hopefully you can send us some of your bride and grooms. We can hear some more wonderful stories. And, and uh, just thank you again. We appreciate you being here. Thank you so much, Stacey. Interested in advertising with Wed Bliss? Want your commercial to air in this space? Visit webbliss.tv slash opportunities for more information. Since the dawn of time, man has set out to bring home a bountiful catch for his family. With the perfect mix of wisdom and equipment, he has the confidence of knowing he can have the freshest fish on his plate by dinner time. Yep, there's a big one. As for everyone else, there's Riverfront Seafood Company. any fresher, it'd still be in the ocean. Hi and welcome back to Wed Bliss. I'm Stacy Eubanks and I am looking stunning today because of this lady right here. Ren Allen is with us today and she is a makeup artist, has been a makeup artist for over 10 years and she's going to share some of her experiences with us and stories about working with brides and offer some advice and tips for us. So thank you so much for being here, Wynn. We appreciate you. Thank you. And thank you for, for this lovely airbrush job that you've done today. You are so welcome. I need Thanks you for the every great introduction. Day. Well, I need you every day. I, I can be bought. I tell everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about your services and what you can do for brides that are planning weddings and leading up to the event as well as the day of the event. Absolutely. Um, I think it's really important for brides to consider the makeup. It's one of the last things they think about but you're paying a lot of money for the photographs and or video and you want to look flawless both in person and of course for those heirloom archive photos that you're going to keep and pass down. Um, so it's something to really think about. How are you going to approach your makeup for your wedding? Are you going to hire a makeup artist? If not, what are your other alternatives? And when you do hire a makeup artist like myself, um, you have in-person consultation you have a studio to come to and do your pre-trial so you know exactly how you're going to look that day, that you're going to be happy with the makeup, it's going to fit your personal style. And then you of course have the privilege of on location services the day of your wedding so that I come to you. And I think that's the most relaxed bride when you make everyone come to you, have your hair people, your makeup people cater to you, work around your schedule and just be relaxed that day. Right, right. So explain the importance of the airbrush makeup to a bride. And I know we've all seen photos where, you know, they've had this sp this tan or the spray tan and they right. use their normal foundation and they're miscolored, mismatched they can or whatever. Be. Mm -hmm. Or the eyes are too dark, lips are too dark. So what what are some of the, the tips that you can have you know, for brides that are planning, as well as the importance of airbrush and that the light reflection in right. photos. Right, right. That's you brought up a good point. Um, it's not even just airbrush makeup, although it is fabulous for brides. It is the most beautiful for HD purposes. And let's face it, everyone out there is shooting in HD now, so um, airbrush is the best. But um, the other thing to consider is what foundation you wear and what foundation you wear for your wedding might need to be two different things because if it's not photo friendly you do get that look of sometimes pale or off looking in the photos or video and in real life it looks great so um, just because your foundation looks beautiful for day to day you might want to really do some research and make sure it's photo friendly so when the flash hits it it doesn't um, bounce that flash off and make you look pale 
So, and an airbrush, wow. Fine, fine mist. It's the finest particles that you can put on your face. It's very long wearing, so you're gonna have it on all day long and look just as good at your reception as you did at the opening of the day. Um, it feels like there's nothing on your skin. And you can probably yes, attest to that. I can, I can attest to that. And you know, when it's going on, it feels wonderful. I mean, it's just, a, a, like you said, a cool mist. Cool and I think mist. I mentioned yeah. whenever you were doing it, I was surprised that it wasn't running because it just felt like it was something cool and it was just right. going to run. It's, it's just, just like been... a cool mist of water yes. being lightly mm -hmm. sprayed onto your skin. Yes. It dries very quickly. It's for all skin types. So it doesn't matter if you're oily, if you're dry, I adjust the formula for you and it will look perfect and flawless all day long. Now tell me a little bit about some skincare options moving, you know, for moving closer to the event. You know, I think a lot of people change up their routine and then they wonder why their face is reacting breaking or breaking out right. because they've you know, quickly changed or started exactly. having more facials or very abrasive to the skin. So what right. can you offer? Well, definitely get your routine figured out a few months ahead. May maybe think about if you're going to try some new products two or three months out, talk to an esthetician. They're wonderful at helping you get your skin to its best condition and you want to be doing that quite a bit ahead. You don't want to wait until the week of your wedding to get a facial done. Um, which if you've had them done regularly up to that point, then it's fine. Mm -hmm. But you need to know and work with an esthetician ongoing and they can get your skin best prepared for me so that I can do the best makeup possible. And there are some really gentle, mild things you can do at home too. I like to teach people about homemade face masks they can do using kitchen ingredients that are very, very natural and gentle. Mm -hmm. um, just things to plump up the skin, you know, drink water regularly. Of course, you can tell a bride to get rest, but she's probably not going to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so at that point, we compensate with luminizers and primers and things to make the skin look flawless for that day. Great, great. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned some wonderful things in the kitchen and, and household ingredients and stuff. Does, now does the chocolate syrup and chocolate ice cream that I often get all over <laughs> my, is, is that has purposes, right? It, it, it well, makes things much better. I wish I could those tell aren't you the yes. things. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe avoid eating those right before the wedding exactly. too. But um, actually chocolate is a wonderful antioxidant, but you want to get it in the purest form possible to use in any kind of homemade face mask. Okay. So it is a wonderful antioxidant, it makes skin really soft, it protects it against the environment, but um, yeah, check out some homemade face masks, maybe I've got some up at my blog and there's some great recipes online, definitely. Great, great. Now also with your business, Faces by Wren, you offer packages with photography as well. So tell us a little bit about that. Yes, well I'm partnered with Keith Dixon Studios. He's a brilliant photographer and videographer and because we are partners, we can team up and give brides even a better package. So when you bundle things, of course you get a better value for your dollar. And a lot of our video and photography packages include the bridal makeup. So one less thing for her to worry about. Well, very good. You know, one of the things that um, we all see those mistakes, we talked about, you know, different mm -hmm. things, the dark eyes, the dark, what's the biggest, biggest tip that you can have for someone who's planning, planning their event, any special event, not just weddings, but as far as making sure that they, they, they present themselves enough as far as they're right. in, in the right With way, their, their best, best features. Forward. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, well, one tip is if you have a really special event coming up and you are going to do your own makeup, come and see me for a private lesson maybe. I also do group lessons, but a private lesson is a great way to kind of hone your skills and feel really confident going into that event that you have the tools and the knowledge you need. If you can't do that, um, my biggest tip is blend, blend, blend. You don't want to see harsh edges. Um, everything should be blended so that colors diffuse gently into each other and you don't see any edges or harshness to it. And that's typical for beauty makeup. Obviously for editorial purposes it's a little different, but for any kind of special event you want it very blended. Okay, so. well great. This is wonderful information. And of course, I'm just feeling wonderful right now with my, my airbrush makeup on, so I'm, I'm very grateful <laughs> for that. Okay, so if you could, tell us a little bit about what you think of Wed Bliss and how important it is to the Tri-Cities and the vendors of this area. I think this is such a fantastic and unique opportunity for all of us in the wedding industry and for this region to get information in a whole new, very progressive manner. Um, it just offers so many opportunities for networking and information for brides and brides-to-be that we've never seen here before. 
Well, good. So well, very exciting. Very happy to be part of it. Great. Well, we're glad to have you here. But tell us how folks can contact you, get a hold of you. Well, um, of course, they can call me, and my number's the easiest one ever. It's 423-202-1111. Okay. So, um, and facesbyren.com, of course. The blog I referred to where the face masks are actually archived, that would be facesbyren at blogspot.com. So lots of ways to find me. Facebook. Yes, Everyone's Facebook. On Facebook Everybody's right? on Facebook. So. And it's Faces by Ren on Facebook. So. Okay, great. Yeah. And that's Faces by Ren, R-E-N. Yes, ma'am. Not W-R-E-N. <laughs> I'm sure you've gotten that before. <laughs> Absolutely. But, well, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you. you. I appreciate you on a personal level today here. So thank, <laughs> thank you so you. much. It's been great being with you. Closed captioning for WebBliss could be sponsored by you. Please visit webbliss.tv slash opportunities for details. Have you noticed how hard it is to find a calorie and carbohydrate controlled meal that actually tastes good? Unlike those other weight loss meals, Chef Anna is now offering Fit Fresh meals made with delicious all natural ingredients. Fit Fresh meals are designed for both losing and maintaining your weight. It's easy. Choose the meal plan that's right for you. And we'll make it convenient by offering pickup and delivery services throughout the Tri-Cities area. For more information, visit chefanna.net or call 423-431-8542. Hi, welcome back to Wed Bliss. I'm Stacy Eubanks, and with me is Martha Painter. And Martha's going to tell us a little bit about her wedding service that she provides, which is harp strings. And so, Martha, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. And if you could just tell us a little bit about the service that you do provide of playing the harp, and a little bit about how that how that affects Wed Bliss, and and how we can help you and get your word out about your business. Thank you, Stacy. Of course, uh, I am a harp soloist, and my business is HarpStrings.org. I do provide elegant music for special events such as wedding ceremony, dinner reception, um, bridal teas, rehearsal dinner, and so forth. And um, I do have a nice website that brides can uh, explore and find out information about the service that I offer. I have a repertoire listing there. You can also order a CD package that includes a sampler of some of my selections. And um, you can request uh, a worksheet and a save the date form, which allows us to go ahead and book the, the wedding date. Okay, great. Now, do you play with other musicians, like such as the, play the flute or the violin? I do have other musicians that I work with. I have a flautist that we play duets. I also have a violinist that we can play duets together, and the three of us will collaborate for a trio. I also have a vocalist uh, that I work with, and those are all nice offerings also. Well, great. Um, also, if you could tell us a little bit about an experience maybe that you've had um, with a wedding and, and one that just kind of stands out. We've all got special moments that we remember from weddings, but one that you can just share with us and tell us a little bit about how it affected you. Certainly. Uh, of course, a wedding is always a beautiful occasion and a happy uh, event in, in the life of the bride and her family. And I, I do recall uh, I have been playing the prelude music, which is prior to the ceremony, where a bride could hear the harp from uh, the dressing room. And she t later told me that, oh, that was so wonderful to hear the harp music because it really calmed me before I came out to exchange vows. So that was a very beautiful experience. And then I also had an experience with a mother and her bride that they came to hear me play at the studio and I was playing Canon in D, which is a very, you know, requested piece. And when I looked up, they both were just crying because it touched them so and it, it was just such a, a beautiful experience for me. That's great. You know, I must admit, as of all the weddings that I've planned and we get so caught up in the details and in, in everything, making sure everything's falling into place, as soon as I hear that wedding march, oh, the tears, they come welling up and, you know, it just, it brings you right back to why you're even there in the first place and all of a sudden all those little details just kind of go mute just so you could have that moment with that bride walking down that aisle and it's it's absolutely beautiful. So I can imagine hearing it on the harp is actually... It is beautiful on the harp. It brings a new dimension to this traditional piece. Uh, it starts out with a beautiful glissando, which is the sound of the harp that everyone loves, mm -hmm. and then goes into the, the 
uh, chorus, and it is beautiful. Now, do most brides um, just kind of go on your recommendations as far as which music and where to play which songs, or do they come with their own list usually? What's the typical protocol, I guess, on that? Is That's a very good question. Um, when I meet with a bride, I do provide a list of a lot of traditional titles, and it also has on there uh, titles of pieces that brides have brought to me by special request because someone else may enjoy that. So I do work with them to find out what style of music they enjoy, what is their vision for the ceremony, what they want their guests to enjoy. And I am open to new pieces, new selections, if it's you know applicable to the harp. So okay. great. When is the typical time to book the music? I know we all hear the you know the typical times on when we should book the venue and book the florist and so on and so forth. What works best in your mind as far as a good time for brides to be thinking about their music? Well, I do think that. Um, if you have a particular desire for a certain musician, you should book as early as possible, especially if it's in one of the wedding months, such as June. Uh, April seems to be a very popular month this year. And uh, at least six months, but especially once you have booked the venue, uh, you want to book the music next and get an idea of matching the music with the sound, you know, the sound of the music with the venue. Okay. Well, great. Well, so far, what do you think of this whole concept of wed bliss? How important do you think it is to your business as well as to the Tri-Cities wedding vendors around the region? I'm very excited about wed bliss. I think it's a great idea and um, it's, it's the first of its kind in this region. I know that the brides are always so excited about any type of research tool that they can use and I think this will be a great tool for them because it's a reoccurring uh, visit they can have with wedding professionals and it's it's excellent to be able to see and to hear what the uh, the vendors have to offer and uh, I think it will also be available in other uh, resources online and so forth so it's a great reoccurring advertisement. Well, very good. Well, thank you. We're glad to have you here with us. And if you could, just tell us how people can get in touch with you so they can book your services. Be glad to do that. Um, you can get in touch with me on my website, which is www.harpstrings.org, or give me a call at 423-239-7152, and I'll be glad to work with you on your wedding. Great. Thank you so much, Martha. Thank you. Calling all brides and grooms, we are now accepting applications for featured wedding couples, recently married or not. Visit wedbliss.tv slash couples for more information. Fact. One in six women will need to defend themselves from attackers. Fact. Shooter's Edge and Piney Flats offer self-defense courses for women. Please, don't become a statistic. Learn to protect yourself and loved ones today. More info at myshootersedge.com. Hi, welcome back to Wed Bliss. I'm Stacey Eubanks, and with me today are recent bride and groom, Derek and Angela Roten. They are with us today. Four months as newlyweds. Congratulations. And thank you. Thank you for being here. We're very glad to have you here. First of all, why don't you tell me about the proposal? Everybody always wants to know about the proposal and to see the ring. And It's so funny. As soon as you get engaged, everybody asks when you get married. And then when you get married, they want to know when you're having a baby. So get ready. Get ready for the questions. But tell us a little bit about the proposal. The proposal had a little bit of help. Um, the plan was I, I rented a, a cabin in Pigeon Forge, took her out to dinner, and had some people come into the cabin and help decorate while I was gone. But I had written on some scrolls, about 14 scrolls, kind of the story of us how we met and little important moments uh, throughout our uh, dating and they all uh, had a single rose with each scroll and led to a bigger bouquet of flowers where the the ring was oh that's wonderful now were you surprised or did you kind of see it come in or just completely taken aback i uh, was taken back no had no clue, no clue whatsoever. So he did very well. He did. Very he did. good. That's very exciting. <laughs> now, um, you know, most people have the the long 
engagement. You know, we hear our, the typical engagement times a year long, and in your case, it was actually a year to the day, correct? Yes, it from, was. From the day you got engaged to the wedding was actually a year, so yes. good for you for, for sticking to that schedule of one year. <laughs> um, in your planning process, if you could tell us a little bit about some of the vendors that you worked with and the experiences they left you with and some of the memories and friendships you're going to continue with your vendors. Uh, we used um, several local vendors. Um, we had Pratt's for our catering. They did a wonderful job. The, um, the table looked wonderful, very elegant and very tasteful. Um, we also used Dina Flinner for our photography. She did such a wo wonderful job. From day one, um, Dina had me come in, meet with her. We sat down at a little coffee shop in Bristol. Um, she also did my um, bridal portraits um, as well. So um, we just we grew together and, and created a very close bond um, with one another. So. Um, and we also uh, worked a lot with uh, Brandy and Travis Woodall. Um, we booked with the venue uh, at the King Center, and that's where we had a reception, and they did a wonderful job. Great. Well, did you have any videography? Yes, we okay, did. You mentioned we did. a photographer. I didn't know if you had a video as our, well. Our videographer was wonderful, Travis Wyatt. He's out of Churchill. He did a wonderful job. Great. And you know, you mentioned Pratt's. I think a lot of folks don't don't realize yes. what a great job mm -hmm. they do at catering and it's not just their wonderful barbecue right. that they offer. So I've worked with them on many weddings and they're, yes. you know, they're very professional and wonderful to work with. Very tasteful. Um, what was the first thing you did in your planning, you know, as far as what you hear about what you should do first and what you should book first? What was the first thing you did? The very first thing, I think it was about two or three weeks um, right after he proposed, we went ahead and started looking at the different venues. We went ahead and booked the chapel and also booked with um, Brandy and Travis at the venue. Um, we wanted to go ahead and make sure that we had um, both places um, booked and ready to go. So we, that's where we started and then on to the dress. On to the dress, yes, very <laughs> exciting. So were you able to keep the dress away from him before the wedding day? I was. Good, good, was. good, 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 good. Stuck with tradition there. So leading up to the big day, um, is there anything that you would have done differently, any advice that you've got for brides that are planning their wedding, potential brides that are, that are gonna be planning soon or recently engaged? Is there anything, any bit of advice that you can offer them either as the bride or as the groom that you can share with us? I would have to say, you know, don't wait till the last minute, you know, plan accordingly. Look at the different ven venues and um, caterers. If, if you have your heart truly set on someone, then you need to go and book with them as soon as possible. Um, if, if not, you know, your heart may be let down because mm -hmm. you may not get, you know, exactly who you thought you were. So um, there will be bumps throughout the whole pro planning process, but you just have to learn, you know, to um, carry on and just do the best you can, you know, enjoy the process. You know, it's very important that, that people realize, I think a lot of brides, ex, you know, they, they have planned it for so long and it's a dream for when they're a little girl and they, if they're not being realistic, if they don't think that something, there's going to be a bump right. along the right. way. And if you're expecting that perfection, there's always something in the background that's going on. It's just most of the time your guests don't know it, only you know it. And so there's no sense in getting, you know, too worked up about it. Right. But um, if you could tell me a little bit about the actual day and how that came about and leading up the, the hour before, the five minutes before you walk down the aisle, those, those special moments, and then we'll, get, we'll capture the actual thoughts of going down the aisle. But as far as leading up to it the day of, I, I think you had mentioned to me off camera mm -hmm. about um, you were still up at 3 a.m. packing for the, for the honeymoon. Yes, so, yes. <laughs> but just the day of the excitement and the jitters. Um, well, the day started off, um, me and my bridesmaids, we just went and we had our um, hair done at Radiance Salon in Jonesboro, and um, of course we were all, started off the day wrong, we were 30 minutes late. <laughs> so um, after that we went to the Carnegie and um, we had a room there, we had all of our makeup and stuff done, and we at that point I was just ready to get everything over with. Um, I, I planned pretty much the entire wedding myself with the help of my mother. So it was it was kind of bittersweet to see the day come and just be able to finally be pampered and relax um, up until, you know, right before we I walked down the aisle. 
Right, so there's a lot of planning that goes into the bride, you know, the, the dress and the accessories and the makeup and the hair. Now, what about the groom? What's the groom doing all morning before the wedding? My morning, we, we had pictures. We were actually, our uh, photographs were before uh, the hers, uh, mm -hmm. and I was, I was doing well, calm, cool, and collected, had all my friends there as my groomsmen. And then about 45 minutes before the ceremony, uh, our preacher was worried that he would forget to turn his microphone on <laughs> during the ceremony. So him and I were in our room off to the side, uh, just by ourselves, and he said, I'm going to turn the microphone on now so I don't forget. So we had to sit in silence for about 45 <laughs> minutes, and that's kind of when the nerves started uh, coming at that point. So what should have been a nice meditative time of right. getting ready for your ceremony, you're sitting there in silence with, with a preacher who's yes. concerned about his mic. So that's yes. funny. That's, that's a good story. So tell us about the actual moment when you're coming down the aisle. What's going through your mind? Are you looking at your groom? Are you tearing up? I honestly um, had a little setback. I stepped out into the middle. Um, all eyes were on me, and I immediately started just skimming over the audience, seeing who all was there. <laughs> Um, and I refused to look actually um, eye to eye at Derek just for the simple fact I knew I'd start crying. So um, I tried to think happy thoughts and, and just tried to at least, you know, not think about, you know, getting myself worked up and upset. So, Well, that's wonderful. What about the groom? In my mind, I'm thinking, just don't cry. Don't, don't break down in front of everybody, start bawling. But uh, it actually made it a little easier. She wouldn't look at me, so there wasn't that eye contact and that big emotion at that point. But then I looked at her mother, and her mother's crying, and my mother's tearful. And so I did get a little tearful. I, I will admit that. But, you know, there had to be some kind of relief yes. of, you know, you're at this moment. You've been planning this moment for a year. And there's so many flashbacks go through your mind of the planning process, but at this point it was you two in the moment. And, and it definitely gives people chills to think about those moments that if, if they've experienced them themselves. So, so if you um, had the opportunity to take advantage of, of watching Wed Bliss back when you were planning, do you think that would have been a, a big help to you? Uh, well, first off, when I did hear about the show, I was very excited. Um, Having this show when I, you know, had um, the opportunity to plan my wedding and everything, it would have been very useful, I think, of being able to just turn on the TV and be able to see the different vendors. You know, you, of course, we, there's tons of bridal shows, um, but for the simple fact, um, just being able to have local vendors and, and not necessarily the magazines that have things, you know, from all over the United States. And so it's really nice to have a TV show that's geared around just, you know, your local area and the Tri-Cities. I just think it would have been great to have had that. So. Well, great. Well, we're glad you've been a part of the show today. And yes, we're very, you. very glad you shared your story with us. It was very heartwarming. And we wish you nothing but the best. Thank you for being a part of Wed Bliss. And um, we look forward to actually seeing the show. And you can show it on it's all your friends and family and, and relive the moments again. So thank you so much for being here. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Calling all brides and grooms, we are now accepting applications for featured wedding couples, recently married or not. Visit wedbliss.tv slash couples for more information. Thank you for your time and from all of us behind Wed Bliss, we hope you enjoyed this pilot episode. We have many ideas for this show, but it can't happen without you spreading the word and interacting with us on our website, Facebook, and Twitter, and most importantly, our sponsors. As Jerome said earlier, everyone can benefit from this new show, the viewers, area wedding professionals, brides and grooms, as well as advertisers. You've also heard from some very respected professionals in this area, and even a recent bride and groom who all love this concept. Let's make this happen. Visit wedbliss.tv slash opportunities today and see what you or your business can gain from this show. I'm Stacey Eubanks, and I'll see you next time on our first episode of Wed Bliss.